just went into what I hear was very hostile territory in Philadelphia and KO'd the former champion. Walk everybody through how you knew you'd win. Well, it's just all the hard work that we put into the camp, uh, previous fights, amateur experience, it all goes together in one, and then we got to exhibit or execute our game plan on fight night. We knew going in the hostile territory that we had to stop him because the judges was against us, uh, the people of Philly was against us, his whole team was against us, so we knew our game plan was to stop him. We went in there and executed that in the seventh round. Um, when you think about it, it's really breaking down the film, breaking down your opponent. Um, the biggest challenge for us was you know, being able to perform at that level in a hostile environment. Um, uh, Brandon, is a, you know, he's, a, he's a good fighter. He's not a bad fighter at all. Um, I think that they didn't do a very good job of their homework as far as matching him up with Calvin. Uh, for whatever reason, they felt like Calvin was, he still had the, was the amateur and they disrespected his punching power. Uh, but these are things going into the fight we knew that was an advantage to us. So now you're the Universal Boxing Federation International Super Middleweight Champion. That is a mouthful. I see you have two belts. You're also the uh, North American Middleweight Association um, box, uh, champion as well. Yes, sir. Kind of explain what that means to you, holding those two belts, particularly the, the Universal Boxing Federation belt. Um, these belts, you know what I mean, they, they mark a certain milestone in my career. And simply is what that is. Um, these belts, they, they let people know that we actually on the right path into our goal, to a world, a world title. But the biggest thing about these belts is that we've proven ourselves. You know what I mean? That's all it is. And once I move past and move on to bigger and better belts, it's going to be the same thing. It's just milestones in our career and almost like different highlights that we reach at a certain level. This belt here helped me uh, get to the top 15 in the country and also the top 80 in the world. So it's a real good belt, regular organization, and we'll continue to the top. Hey coach, when you have a fighter that's in a position that Calvin is in, he's now 11 and 0, uh, and he's got two titles. How do you elevate and get higher in your own game moving forward? Um, and there's only one way you're going to do that, it's going to be your, your, your sparring, you know, stay, stay, stay true to the basics, what we've always been doing. And uh, you know, Calvin said it, said it pretty good when he said that we already knew what we know. We already know what we're at you know, on the boxing level. Um, it's the world who hasn't seen us. So it's just a matter of just showing them what we're capable of doing. But there's no doubt we got to get the better opposition, the better sparring, you know, the better places to get better sparring. We're going to just take our game to another level. Speaking of sparring, getting ready for this fight, uh, you, I assume that you had a lot of great sparring partners, a lot of good training. How much does that matter when you're going into somewhere like Philadelphia, a boxing mecca, facing such a tall task? Man, it matters a lot. It matters because, one, the sacrifice it takes to go get the sparring and the effort it takes to go to the sparring. Now, we travel every week for seven weeks straight uh, to Tulsa, to Little Rock, here at Springdale, to Solid Spring. We traveled all over to make sure that we got the right mix of sparring partners to make all this happen in Philadelphia. I mean, it's part of the game, man. It doesn't go unnoticed that my sparring partners have a big, a big toll in this. I'm gonna thank all of them. I'm gonna get them all Merry Christmas gift. And so, <laughs> they're a part of the team to make the dream come true. Coach, how difficult is it for you to find Calvin's sparring partners and even fight team? Um, man, it's, it's, it's hard. But it's really not, a, it's not really about finding uh, these unbelievable sparring partners, it's about knowing how to do um, really uh, skill sparring. You know, to work on the things that he needs to work on to prepare him for the fight that's coming up. I'm constantly um, trying to push him, put him in situations to make him uncomfortable. Uh, we knew going into Philly, it was going to be an uncomfortable situation. Um, uh, I, I took my hat off to Philly for making it more uncomfortable than I thought it would be. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't walk around with my mouth and drop surprise. You know, they, was, they was doing them, and uh, we had to come in to do us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the deal is just that when, we put, when, we, when, we, when we're doing our sparring, I can take a guy who may not be as good, but the ability to control yourself when you're sparring is another skill level. You got guys who you know, they punch hard and fast all the time. But can you slow it up? Can you change the syncopation of your punches? You know, throw a little bit slower this time and throw it fast. There's so much stuff you can still work on in sparring, even though I may not have an all-American sparring partner. 
on a lighter note, Calvin, you just had your second daughter bringing uh, your family to a total of four children and a Ooh. wife. And we're, and we're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I've been done. I've been not, done after baby three. We're not done, but you done. I've been done after baby number three, man. <laughs> God had a different sex, so <laughs> baby number four, man. It's a blessing, though, man. It's um, I know cause we got people in the world who can't have kids, and so for me and my wife to have, you know, the fourth child is a, a definitely a huge blessing. We're not taking it for granted. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna shower her with love and appreciation, like all my other kids, man. It's a huge blessing. How does having a family push you in your career? I mean, so actually, man, baby number four, it just made me run even harder on the treadmill. Maybe hit the pads even more harder, maybe spar even more harder. So all it does is add more fuel to the fire, baby. And this train's not stopping anytime soon, man. These kids gotta eat, my wife gotta eat, my family gotta eat, man. And I'm here to support them, baby, all the way. What's next for Calvin Henderson? To the top, baby. I mean, like we doing, we taking these right fights, man. We trying to fight anybody we can fight at the right time, at the right place, for the right amount of money. And we're gonna make it to the top, baby. That's all it is, man. We're gonna, me and my team, we're gonna deliberate. We're gonna pick the right, uh, the right promotion company. We're gonna help us with our career. And man, just stay tuned, baby, all the way to the top. It's about growth. You know, it's about constantly putting them in situations. We want to grow. You know, there's a, there's a lot of fighters out there, you know. That, you know, there's two reasons why you're doing this for money or you're doing this for fame. And hopefully you're doing it for fame and you get paid for money. So, yeah. But the deal is that you know it's about growth. Like we want to be the best. We want to be the best skillfully be the best. So it's about growth. And we're just gonna keep every fight we take is a fight to step us up. We're trying to step up. That's all we're trying to do. Man. Team Sauce came out in full effect, even from far away. Uh, we had a lot of people travel up to Philly. How important is your support, your, your family, your friends, your team sauce in general to you when you fight? But it's huge, man. It's everything to have these guys believe in a dream, man. It's one thing to have a dream for yourself. And of course, you're going to always believe in yourself and your dream. But to have a whole network of people who also believe in what you're doing and they support you 100%, man, that's the worst can describe how that feels, man. And being in Philadelphia and hearing people cheer for me and Philadelphia, man, that, that was a game changer right there, man. I appreciate it. I love all you guys, man. And we're going to ride this out to the top, baby, to the wheels fall off. Coach Kevin, from a coaching standpoint, from a, uh, from a mentor standpoint, uh, somebody who's been on boxing for so long, how important is it to have a base, as Calvin has, moving forward in his career? Hey, that, that's what makes it break you. It's real simple. Your base is going to make a break you. And it's not just your base and your fundamentals in the gym. Your base and fundamentals outside the gym is just as important. We haven't seen too many super athletes, super star athletes, come up short because their outside life falls apart. Um, Calvin is extremely balanced. He's balanced inside, his work ethic is, is second to none. His commitment to his family and what he's trying to do is second to none outside. So you put two, you put those two things together, man, that's, that's equal success. Is there anything else you guys would like to add? Yeah, man, all glory to God, baby. All glory to God, All man. glory to God, you right about that. Straight right boxing fitness, man, up to the top. Hey, mark my words, 2019, 2020, we're gonna be on top of the world, man. And Coming you know, for them all. And you know, we never can get it out of this team effort. You know, so Anthony Tucker, Matt Hamilton, hey guys, that's why we're here, and that's what we're gonna keep going, that's our team. Look, I'm not, uh, I just wanted to ask you, you have your gloves on right now. What, uh, why? We was working out. <laughs> The bills happen to be here. You know what I'm saying? It's called cause and effect. I got a question for y'all. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.